This is Ada Verna's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. A very good evening and welcome to our special coverage on the corona crisis, coronavirus crisis. We are, this is our continuing coverage and this is a special episode of Get Real. Thank you very much for joining me to have the, the discussion exactly what's going on in Sri Lanka and all around the world. I've invited uh, Dr. Ramesh Padrana, Minister of Plantation and Export Agriculture. He's also the cabinet spokesperson. Uh, doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for being here. I understand the government is very busy in tackling this crisis. Where are we right now, uh, Doctor? Uh, at the outset, let me thank you for inviting me for this program. And uh, we are very confident, the government is very confident that we should be able to manage this outbreak. And uh, from the earlier days, His Excellency the President has taken necessary initiatives to ensure that the Sri Lankan people don't suffer because of this uh, health issue. But on the other hand, we must categorically state the fact that this is the biggest health crisis of our lifetime. Not only the Sri Lankans, but uh, people all around the world suffer immensely because of this uh, pandemic. But we have taken initiatives uh, early enough to ensure that uh, the, the disease does not spread rapidly around the country. So, um, so we must also thank in this particular moment our healthcare workers and also the people of the armed forces, including police, and also the people. You know, the larger segment are the people of this country having obeyed to the decisions made by the government and also by the health authorities. They have stayed at home. They are falling in line with the, uh, uh, you know, the request of the health authorities. So because of that support, we have managed to curtail the numbers 222 for the time being. And we believe that uh, we have prevented or curtailed the community spread, but it's, it's largely because of the curfew. So we are requesting people of this country. The prime line is that we need to keep the distance, we have to stay at home, we have to maintain our personal hygiene. If we do so, we should be able to manage this condition during the next couple of weeks. But the next couple of weeks are paramount important in relation to see the outcome of the measures that we have taken. Doctor, you're a medical doctor as well. Um, um, one of the key things that continuously in the media, everybody, every health official is saying, <coughs> keep the distance. What is the very <coughs> reason on this? And why should people like, even like when the curfew was lifted, we always saw people, you know, flocking in, uh, congregating in, in, in numbers. Why is that very important to keep the distance and to make sure that we are not spraying it? No, the, the, the first factor is that virus is very contagious. So it can spread so rapidly, at least one person, infected person can spread the disease to at least two to three people. So the important factor is if you're, if you're close to, if you're close to associating somebody who's already infected, there is a greater chance of you catching the disease. That's why we state the fact that you keep the distance. So to keep the distance, best practice is to stay at home. Under this backdrop, we, we need to adopt new social norms, mm -hmm. and also new religious norms. The, the, the social gatherings has to be mani uh, minimized. And also we don't get to the places where a lot of people flock around. Uh, but we have seen, unfortunately, even though a lot of people follow these instructions certain times, when the curfew is, is lifted, some people, because of this you know, panic buying sort of situation that, that was created during the last couple of days, people uh, rush to buy their food items and other essential medicaments mm. and so on and so forth. That, that is not a good sign, but uh, we have seen that congestion is also being reduced during the last couple of days. Yesterday, for an instance, we saw in Gold District, people managed to purchase their, their necessities uh, at, a, at a decent pace. Uh, I think people are getting used to that. Important factor is that you have to maintain your personal hygiene. That's why, you know, it's always it's asked that you keep the distance and also you wash your hands frequently. And also adapt other, you know, the, the measures that are related to maintain a good personal hygiene. You know, there are certain other preventive mechanisms to, to prevent the disease from catching. There are certain things that doctors have recommended, medical professionals have recommended, including mm, taking more vitamin C, mm. which, which boosts your immunity, and also gargling of your mouth with hot water, and then consuming hot water, and inhalation of uh, probably uh, steam, because uh, it's widely known that uh, virus cannot survive for a long, longer time when the temperature rises above 30 to 32 degrees centigrade. It's a debatable thing. Earlier they said it was 26 to 27 degrees of centigrade. But now it's very clearly known the virus cannot survive when the temperature is above 35 degrees. So steam inhalation, drinking uh, hot water frequently, and also consuming hot water. 
will ensure up to a certain extent that you you know safeguard yourself so those are the normal and and uh, simple measures that we can adopt to ensure that we don't catch the disease this does not mean that it would uh, you're safe just because you drink uh, hot water but you actually these are safe practices that you need to i mean like uh, our, our parents our grandmothers and you know always say you know as soon as you eat drink hot water because all all the the, the fat that is there will go into your stuff again all these you know usual practices which we've been taught from our childhood is what we i mean there's nothing yes. big of a change we need to make exactly so back to basics but on the other hand that's why peop- some of the people have not taken this matter seriously mm. because the advice is uh, forthcoming they are they're very simple things but uh, unfortunately we don't adhere certain times to even simplest of measures as well that's why we see people they flock around and also some people they've not listened to the medical advice that were given during last couple of days all the media we must thank at this particular moment media as well so you've done a tremendous uh, job of work to ensure that people are educated about this particular condition but having having done all that you still see patients with the symptoms they yeah. have not reported to the idh hospital yesterday. they have gone to the private hospitals they have gone around they have stayed at their place infecting the the family members their loved ones putting all of them at risk so uh, it's a very unfortunate situation but on the other hand we must thank the the large population of this country they have been they are educated lot actually prime fact about sri lankan healthcare system is you know world all around the world sri lankan healthcare system is highly appreciated because we are produced more with a lower cost it's because the female one fact is the female literacy our mothers are mm-hmm. very much educated yes. if doctor say something they adhere to that and also now not only the females males are also very much educated set of people so they adhere to those uh, measures that are adopted by the health authorities so they follow those instructions so fortunately even though few people do not listen to this greater majority of the people fortunately they listen to those advices and because of that we are very hopeful the government can control with the help of the other health authorities uh, it goes back to the ba- uh, like you said the basics uh, more importantly we need to understand the fact that everybody has to follow these rules not just uh, a few people because at the end of the day the ones who follow and the ones who doesn't uh, there's a disparity and make sure that you know everybody is actually uh, doing their part doctor one of the things that you touched uh, about, about the fact like you know one person uh, what happened yesterday uh, what, what did not come forward there is a fear uh, among the public saying when you get labeled you know your quarantine it it's as if you have got the virus so uh, how how can we continuously keep you know telling people you know quarantine is safeguarding the community and your loved ones it's not it does not necessarily mean that you have the virus yeah that's right it's 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 some it's something pretty you know very very normal and also something that you don't have to worry about quarantine in the sense now you have conveyed the message actually so it's it's a you know global uh, health scenario and you have seen people who are infected actually starting from prince charles to the mm-hmm. the prime minister of uh, united UK. kingdom and also the health minister of that particular country and also the several of cabinet ministers from the european countries and uh, they are they are infected it's nothing nothing you know that the health wise it's something simple you can catch the disease but it's not your fault but on the other hand if you catch the disease you have a social responsibility mm-hmm. you know, to ensure that you protect your loved ones and also you are protect you protect your people in the neighborhood you protect the country at large so that message has to be conveyed very clearly that you know you've been doing that mess- you, you know the media especially print and digital media and also social media you've done tremendous work we salute and we 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 pay our gratitude to all of you you have done that work uh, but we need to continue to say that you know the the isolation in social isolation means you have to do something to ensure that you are protected uh, from the from from you, you first you protect yourself and secondly you protect the society and on the other hand the the important factor here is even if you are positive if even if you are positive you have the you have the active disease it's 80% of the patients they go through a very mild disease it's mm-hmm. flu like illness cough and cold and you come out well especially if you are a healthy person on the other hand another 10% can go into a moderate level of disease with with uh, with some form of pneumonia you know it's 5 to 5 to 6% of the patient only catch the or develop the severe disease 
They are the people with comorbid conditions. They, they could be having hypertension, they could be having diabetes mellitus, they could be having other disease condition where their immunity is lower. So they are the, they are, they are the risk category. Was that the case with the two people who, who died uh, here in Sri Lanka? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So one, per, one person, uh, he had undergone a kidney transplant, obviously, you know, their immunity is at a lower level. They, are, they, they go through an immunocompromised condition. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason. And the second patient was, um, he also had comorbid conditions and he presented late on the other hand. So doctors didn't have a chance to intervene. So otherwise, the, it's, a, it's a mild disease, but it doesn't, you, know, you can't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can convey a bad message or wrong message exactly. on the other hand. But here in Sri Lanka, rest assured, you know, the Sri Lankan healthcare system is prepared to take care of you you know we are we are a nation we have we are we, we uphold our free health system we appreciate and we acknowledge the fact that medical medical workers in all forms across the board for a period of time done their bit and they are they are prepared to do that again for the nation so you come forward if you have mildness of symptoms go to a government hospital get yourself checked you, it's it's 99 percent you don't have the disease yeah but it's best that you go to the hospital you know if you have you know flu-like symptoms how, report to a doctor uh, and get it checked minister uh, i really want to know if by any chance let's say the, the, these days there's curfew uh every, every everything is shut down so let's say if by any chance if i if i think you know i might i might be sick what's the process how do you get to a hospital no there is no trouble at all, not only for these conditions, for any other medical emergency, any other medical condition, all the government hospitals are opened. They're open 24-7. You can go to a hospital, your, your conditions would be checked, they will do all the basic medical tests. Would, would the police the, allow you to? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. If you're going to the hospital, if you tell the police, they will surely let you go. Because it's, it's, a, it's a medical emergency. So even for the other conditions, not for this one, so it's rest assured that you can go to it's, the hospital, it's you not be as given if, the proper care. It's not as if you have to call an ambulance in order to g uh, get to anything. You can actually, if there's sickness, you can actually go. You can go, one, one, one option. And second option, as you correctly mentioned, you can call the, the suicide yes. uh, hotline. They will also take you to the hospital if it's a real emergency. Otherwise, there are no restrictions. That, that message is very clear. Uh, we, have, we have seen during the last couple of days, people have come across little difficulties in relation to you know, purchasing their medicaments. Mm -hmm. For that also, you know, the government hospitals are, you know, they're willing to support. One thing is they have open hotlines, most of the time, most of the hospitals. Even if you can't uh, reach them out, you know, there are other channels. You can, you, you can seek support from a medical person or somebody who is working mm -hmm. in the hospital. Otherwise, you can, when the, when the curfew is lifted, it would be lifted in most of the parts oh, yes. of the country, ex excluding five districts. If you go to the hospital, they will surely support to secure your uh, the medication. So then, nothing to worry. It, you know, they they are at your service 24/7, and we will take care of the the uh, of, of the people those who need support. What's the thinking behind only to make sure that continuous curfew is being implemented in five districts and not the others? A significant number of patients. Up to 85% uh, they've been reported from those five districts. So there is a you know, cluster sort of uh, spreading pattern. So greater majority of the patients are found from the, the western province, starting from Kalambu district, Kaluthara, Gampa, and also Puttalam. So in Sri Lanka, these are the you know, red districts, we, as mm. we say. So we must ensure that um, these are breaks that we provide to ensure that disease does not spread from one person to another. So uh, with, with imposing of the curfew, we curtail the spread of the disease so that's why we take these breaks to ensure we have we have the the maximum level to ensure that we um, prevent the transmission but at the same time as a responsible government we must make sure that people do not go through hardships mm -hmm. yes we accept the fact that it's a little difficult for the people they do not have uh, everything that they want but they are you know they are they are sacrificing themselves so we, we acknowledge we appreciate we thank them for that but we are doing it to ensure that we we do not head into a health jeopardy in the country. Indeed, uh, uh, Doctor, the other thing, um, do you think the current government along with the health workers, along with the uh, military is able, like, I understand we are now at uh, level two, uh, which is uh, containing, uh, can this escalate? Do you think is there's a possibility that it can escalate? And more importantly, 
do we have enough facilities to, to tackle a situation like that? Firstly, we think that uh, we are very, very strong in controlling the condition. We think that we can come on top with the help of the health authorities, healthcare workers, and also with the uh, people of the armored forces. Mm -hmm. We should be able to manage this condition because the numbers that we see are from basically uh, we started with the people, those who traveled abroad, or those who have directly connected to the people who have come from abroad. So still we see that cluster. If you, if you see patients, they are, either they have traveled abroad or they have associated somebody who has traveled abroad very closely. Mm -hmm. And also their family members, immediate family members are affected, except for few cases which we couldn't trace. Actually, we managed to trace almost everyone with the help of the intelligence agencies. You have seen that. Yes. We have got some of them to uh, self-quarantine themselves. And also some uh, 3,000 people, were 3,517 people were inside the quarantine centers. Now those numbers are coming down because we are gradually releasing since they had spent 14 days inside the quarantine centers. Yesterday also we saw some yes. 327 people being Even released. Today, today they will release another 200 300, yeah, 200 odd uh, people. So they are coming out. So we are actually passing the critical time starting from 10th of last month. We first, uh, we, the, the second patient was uh, found on 11th of March. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this uh, yeah, it's about uh, nearly uh, two weeks ago. Now we are passing a critical period. That's why we say these two weeks are also very important to ensure that we don't see large numbers, we don't see spikes. If we, if we can prevent that, we can flatten the curve. If we can flatten the curve, rest assured that we can gradually control it. But it will take some time. At least we have to be vigilant for, for the next four, the two, to, two to four weeks. So the next one month is very critical mm -hmm. to ensure that we keep that social distance. We don't spread the disease. If we do so together as a country, we can come on top. Indeed, uh, perhaps uh, the government uh, must think in lines of, you know, changing the word quarantine to a holiday. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody will uh, make sure that they go on that. Uh, I want to talk about the economic uh, incentives that the government uh, has given uh, to the people and I understand what exactly the planning, there are, there's a lot of planning happening uh, behind the scenes. I want to get into that, but before that, let's take a short commercial break. This is Get Real. I'm in conversation with Dr. Ramesh Patran and we'll be right back. This is Ada Verana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. This is Ada Verana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is a special episode of Get Real, uh, our continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. I'm in conversation with the government spokesperson, Minister Dr. Ramesh Patrana. Um, Minister, well, I want to get into the economic incentives uh, the government is currently giving the people. Yesterday, also, President announced uh, from the President's office that there are other uh, incentives that's coming. Just give us a brief idea exactly what the government is doing and what kind of economic uh, relief that uh, they are planning on giving it to the people. Actually, under these conditions, uh, we, we understand the people, especially those who were at the lower level of the social strata of this country, they are going through a very difficult time because they, they can't find day-to-day -day work. So government is very considerate about that, having considered that we have extended our helping hand towards, uh, towards those who are needy. That's why we have uh, given that uh, allowance of, let's say, the, it, it's a loan actually with a uh, with a grace period of six months, mm -hmm. interest-free loan for the Samurdi recipients of 10,000 rupees. Uh, that covers about 1.7 million families of the country. And on top of that, we have given another this 600 This is the lower level uh, of yes, income. Yes, they, they don't have a fixed income. Okay. So it's, um, it's basically uh, 1.7 million families. And also on top of that, we have uh, approved uh, that, the, the same facility for another 600,000 families. In total, that will cover about uh, 2.5 million families mm -hmm. of the country. And on top of that, we have given the same allowance, rather the loan, for another uh, 600,000 elderly people, those who, have been receiving, those who have been receiving government benefits. And also we are giving the same benefit to the people, those who are disabled. So we are covering a large segment. In that segment, we are expecting to cover about 4 million families. So we don't stop there. Actually, we have given large-scale relief economic-wise 
to most of the people, those who have taken personal loans, yeah. we have given a moratorium for about uh, three to four months and they don't have to pay anything during that period of time. And also given the same relief for the uh, lease rentals, uh, for the tri-show drivers, uh, for the, for the tri-shows, the motorcycles and also the uh, small vans mm -hmm. and the school buses. Uh, so that sort of relief uh, package is offered and also uh, the utility bills, wise electricity bills, the water bills and the other utility bills, you don't have to pay for a uh, for a period of three months. So we hope that we should be able to bring things under control during that period of time. And also we are expecting to uh, for the economy to bounce back afterwards. That's what you see in China as well. We have yes. seen so it was locked down for a period of time, but they are coming back very strongly. So that uh, we are looking forward for something of that nature to happen in Sri Lanka as well. I want to, uh, doctor, when you say 10,000 rupee loan uh, given, given into these people, uh, does it get credited to their accounts or how, how exactly, what is the mechanism? I mean, do they have to travel somewhere to get this? What's the, no, the Some of the recipients, they generally go to some of the banks at their villages. So they are they're, they're clustered all around. So by yesterday, actually, they got the first installment of theirs from the some of the banks. 80% of them have received that. That's 5,000 rupees. So um, we don't know, it's nothing major, but for the people, that's also something, something good yes. for the time being for, to, to purchase their essential items. And uh, the second installment would be released uh, during the course of next week or so. So it, that won't take a long time. It's an easy mechanism. And also the, 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 the officials who are attached to the some of the department, they know exactly where these people live. Certain times where people can't come to the bank, they have ensured that uh, they visit their families yeah. and provided that relief. So that is that is carried out. We have a system uh, of things doing, uh, you know, that, that's, that, that's happening in this country. So that uh, systems, uh, working properly. The other thing is, uh, it's good that uh, it's getting credited to their accounts. But now, from from your account, how do they withdraw it, or how do they get it, and then actually use it to buy purchase uh, essential goods? Uh, what's the process there? Uh, I mean, like, can you just walk yes. to the bank? Yes. What, yes. Yesterday, it? you saw there was a bit of a issue because a lot of people have flocked around those some yes. of the banks but in most of the places there were no uh, queue as such you know people were served at a decent pace but what happened yesterday was you know the some of the banks also they have to source from the government yes. banks they have to go to withdraw their cash and bring to the some of the bank because they, they mm. don't keep a keep a lot yeah. of money in the bank so there was a little delay but these are gradually eased off now so even today some some people they took that personal interest to go there and deliver to the people, those who need, those who couldn't withdraw their money yesterday. Uh, there's a system. And also, on the other hand, uh, there is a mechanism to give them a, a packet of, uh, you know, dry rations yes. at a subsidized cost. That is also organized by the Samurdi movement. So the some, uh, commissioners and also the officers attached to some of the department, they've been doing that. So they source it from, the, from Satosa most of the time or from the uh, corporate uh, establishments or the particular villages. They ensure that they, the, the people, those who really need it, they are given at a subsidized rate. So that, that system is working perfectly well. Uh, indeed, uh, Doctor, the government's thinking, the forward thinking uh, mechanism is let's shut down. Uh, to make sure that there is minimum movement and then provide delivery of essential items, uh, whether it's uh, vegetables or fish or whatever, to the homes. Let, let these carts, these food, food trucks go there. Uh, even uh, this is actually what, what people are thinking uh, is the fact that is there a mechanism to screen those people who are going into homes? Because apparently there could be a possibility of them contaminating uh, uh, these houses as well. Because even even my mother was very skeptical when when, when the food cart came uh, in order to buy because they, they don't know from where they are coming. Is there a process? How can you just you know dispel these rumors saying that you know these people are not the carriers? Uh, yeah, that's right. So you this you raised a very important and valid question at this particular moment. Uh, there is no mechanism to screen them 100%. But uh, the particular agencies say if it's a fishing, uh, in related to fishing activity, the, the fisheries corporation have asked them to uh, follow proper procedures in relation to healthcare. And also it's the same thing with the cooperative wholesale establishments. And also it's the same thing with the other delivery mechanisms. But we have seen this happening in the other parts of the... At, at the first level, we are trying to establish the mechanism to ensure that every street you know, every area gets something every day. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's there no way that they can purchase things from their boutique or they can't yes. go to the supermarket. First thing is to establish. Yes, secondarily, we must ensure that they are delivered in a healthy manner. 
in most of the countries also we have seen that what they do is generally uh, once they deliver the packet they keep it outside for a little longer time yes. it's best that you don't touch hand to hand keep that distance but you take the bag and you keep that bag outside for a little while in hot tower or outside temperature probably that will help to kill yes. a virus if there is if if there is anything so that's that sort of a mechanism added precaution. added precaution so that's sort of a mechanism you have to adapt but here we have always we have the risk of getting exposed to a virus but we hope that you know since it's not you know gone out uh, to a wide area Indeed. so we are still in a we are playing the match still in a safer ground yes. i suppose yes. what what uh, the people in this country need to realize is that this is not you know the government doing their job and they sitting at home this is like a, a united effort like everybody has to do their part uh, you know adopt uh, uh, new mechanisms new thinking uh, and actually you know support each and every one because I, I, i mean we need to come out of this as a country not, not as individuals or the government or parties or political i think that has gone out of the window right now one good thing that has come from this is the fact that everybody is united uh, doctor So one one question before we go in for a break that I wanted to ask is the fact that Sri Lanka is not a country that is very much utilizing digitized uh, monetary systems. We a uh, lot of people still use cash. So okay, they come to their door. Uh, how the cash is still there? There is an exchange still happening. There is a risk on that front as well. Uh, what kind of uh, thinking is the government having on this? You know, let's let's. you know make sure that no, some going for very important actually his excellency the president he had this vision from the inception actually you must have seen even before mm-hmm. this outbreak occurs so he was summoning most of these uh, the government agencies and asked them to get themselves computerized digitize yes. their mechanisms but we were a little a little behind in relation to you know the people at the village level they are not very you know technologically savvy so yes. they don't uh, they don't understand certain times this credit tra- tra- transactions are the forms of uh, you know digital 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 mechanism so we trust that in time to come uh, you know those are the the good things about this dark cloud you know the yes. silver lines of this dark cloud actually people get used to new systems, systems the new mechanisms people tend to use a new technology they use their phones for the first time to order things and as you correctly mentioned so these things will take place these are these are points you know turning around points our, our society must evolve itself so these are the good things that had happened but for the time being uh, large section we have to you know accept the fact that larger segment of the society people for that matter they are a little reluctant to use currently except those who are in the urban areas in the village level they are little reluctant yes we must you know keep them doing that and we must tell them how to use it we must show them we must teach them if you coach them you should be able to get them also into the same platform uh, prior to the election one of the key buzzwords uh, was the fact that you know system change uh, i think time has now come for us to actually uh, put that into practice uh, not because of a political ideology it's because for you and for me to be safe i want to talk about uh, the tourism industry as well what kind of plan the government is having uh, going forward and also um, at large the economy uh, what is the government's thinking how long will this uh, actually last for and in case how are we going to come back to work and uh, keep this country running uh, let's take a short commercial break this is get real i'm in conversation with dr ramesh patra and i will be right back This is Other Verona's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. This is Other Verona's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis. Welcome back everyone to Get Real. This is a special program um, based on the current coronavirus crisis and exactly what Sri Lanka is doing in order to combat this pandemic. Uh, I am in conversation with Dr. Ramesh Bhadrana, cabinet spokesperson and he's also the Minister of Plantation and Agriculture as well. Uh Minister, uh, one of the things that came out from the uh, the World Health Organization was test test test. That's what they're saying, test as much as possible. Is that happening here? Yes, of course, yes. people with the uh, symptoms and also with the suspected history they will surely be tested so there no uh, issue as such in relation to that you know the testing of we have the capacity we have the test kits and all that is ready and uh, whoever that comes to the hospital with the suspected uh, history with the contact history and also with the uh, symptoms of uh, that are compatible with this mm-hmm. particular disease they would be tested 
Okay, uh, let's get into the economic uh, thinking. Um, President is, I, I understand, is working very hard in order to make sure that you know the country is not going to go down the drain uh, after after this entire uh, pandemic just passes by. What is the plan? How are we going to get people back to work? Uh, are, how, how long are we going to stay in this self? No, we keep our fingers crossed in relation to this health issue. If we can manage well, we should be able to come out of this issue within one month's time, as I mentioned earlier. But it will take another month or two for us to establish ourselves as a society. So there are you know, certain things. There. The first thing is the, the health-related issue. Second one is the economic impact. Third would be the psychological impact that people are having because they have lost their jobs, they lost their income. Yes. I'm referring to the psychological aspect of it. And also a lot, lot of people are worried that their loved ones are certain times abroad, they will catch the disease. So there are you know certain things that we have to implement and adapt during next months, month, you know the months ahead. Uh, Economy-wise, uh, we think that we should be able to bounce back, even though some of the segment would would be really badly affected. Say, for instance, the tourism industry would be affected because we get most of the tourists coming from European countries and during China. last years and China. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there are certain good things about tourism industry as well. If we come out positively, if we can show the world that we have we have had an excellent controlling mm. mechanism in this country, that people are safe here, nobody has to worry about to come to this country, that itself is a positive message. Mm. So people will start coming back to this country again. And China is also bouncing back, as you can see now. So we used to get a lot of uh, tourists from China. The numbers would be doubled. They would be willing to come back to Sri Lanka. But when it comes to the European tourists, you know, we are going to have a question mark whether they can come out this scenario yes. in a shorter period of time or not. But we have certain positive things in relation to tourism industry. Uh, but our aviation industry, uh, that would be affected. And also the global shipments, that would be affected. So on the other hand, the good thing is people are, con you know, we, people, people are concentrating on a national economy again. We have to grow more in this yes. country. We are an agriculture-based economy. We have been having that for, a, for, a, for, for ages. Now we are going back to basics. We, people think that we need to grow something at their backyard. Indeed. You know, it's my, my you know, from from a, from a mild, you know, the moderate scale to a you know, higher scale level. So, and government is also considering that we need to grow whatever possible. So paddy cultivation, yes, we do that. We have a decent harvest this time, so we have paddy for a longer period of time. And our tea, even though the markets are affected at this particular moment, we can have a very good market because our tea is mainly going to the. Uh, Middle Eastern yes. countries and Russia. So fortunately, those countries are not that affected. And we have given that freedom for the people, those who have been working in the agricultural sector, to go ahead and, you know, continue their production. So that's, you know, the, the government is forward thinking in relation to that we don't, even though we have curtailed certain activities in factory level, BUI and all, we have given the freedom to the people at the farming level because we can't shut down all the economic yes. activities. Our fishery, fishing industry, so we've given the freedom for them to go ahead. And also we have to ensure that we do that productively in time to come. So we produce more at a lower cost. And we have this substantial market. We have a decent market in Sri Lanka. And so if we produce more at a decent rate, we should be able to export that to the other countries. Mm -hmm. China and India, they have a 2.5 billion population. So that national thinking has come forward again. Good thing is now you have seen people uh, about two weeks ago, people started complaining even from the medical sectors. We didn't have enough face masks. Yes. We didn't have personal protective equipment. Now look forward. Now Everybody our government sector, they have come forward to produce masks. And also they have come forward to produce excellent uh, personal protective equipment. And we have a different opening. Now we should be able to export that to the other countries. Yes, indeed. That, that, yeah. that beats the question. There is actually, despite all this, there is, if by any chance we get it right uh, uh, internally, we can actually sell this. There's actually a, a possible market uh, all around the world. Huge market, huge market. Yesterday we saw that uh, one of the factories in Wuhan province, they are coming back to produce some three billion masks. Mm. So that order has come from United States of America. So this is the potential we have. So even though our you know, government sector apparel industry would be affected because most of our, most of our exports went yeah. to United States of America and Europe. But under this backdrop, we should be able to change our uh, production. So we should be able to 
uh, you know provide to the the market demand it so, all so we, are, we are rapidly adapting it all depends on the fact that whether uh, we keep this number down the infected cases down and everybody do, of course, do yes. their part uh, doctor w- one thing now let's say we come back right now we understand the 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 uh, income of the government has drastically gone low it it, it is you know because of the fact the incentives given and all there's a fear uh saying that once we everything comes back to normal there'll be unbearable taxes implemented on the people what Actually, can you say yeah, about the government policy was to simplify the tax structure that's why we cut out that vat of 15% yes. to 8% we got rid of the nationalisation building nbt nation building tax and so says and also we have dramatically reduced the pay tax so our aim was to simplify the tax structure not to burden people with a lot of taxes and give that freedom for the uh, sri lankan investor for them to come forward and to ensure that they invest more money mm. uh, so that that was working really well and also on the other hand government has curtailed its expenditure starting from his excellency the yes. president he reduced his staff he reduced number of vehicles he used he he actually uh, spent his own money to travel abroad and he have categorically stated the fact that government ministers the members of parliament or the other government officers we not going to import vehicles for our usage for for another 3 years i think that will continue for a good 5 years and now uh, to ensure that we set off the trade balance so generally we uh, import twice as much as we export so there is the issue so we have stopped the uh, importation of vehicles for the time being uh, we are not going to uh, import other non essential items what are the what are the basic cost track you know the you need to spend so much of money for fuel yes fuel fuel has come down fortunately we we need to we are spending a lot of money for the vehicle importation and we need we spent a lot of money for uh, for sugar which is which, which you can produce can locally we need the we spend a lot of money for fertilizer okay up to a certain extent you can say since we have this agricultural economy we need to bring it down but on the other hand we can produce it that in sri lanka uh, one exception is uh, essential drugs so we need to bring them we need to import there no exception but on the other hand we have a we have a trade uh, the manufacturing arm in sri lanka which produces about 20% of the essential drugs to sri lankan market if bangladesh can do that if india and pakistan can do that there no reason why sri lanka can't yes, do it indeed. so we should be able to have a good manufacturing facility uh, medicament wise also drugs wise also so we're looking forward to do that and we we import a lot of uh, palm oil so yes. that's uh, that's coming at huge uh, cost so there are ways and means that we can curtail those so if we curtail our imports and at the same time try and imp- uh, improve our exports we should be able to balance this economy indeed uh, that that was a very good point uh, doctor there <coughs> finally i have just two questions one is about our health workers uh, <coughs> the the uh, members who are currently working uh, the electricity board the water board uh, the military forces everybody who's in the forefront of this battle against the coronavirus crisis what has the government done to keep them safe actually the the healthcare workers we repeatedly state the fact that they take in lot of risks to ensure that people of this country live in a healthy and a, a safer lifestyle so we pay our gratitude every time you know so on the other hand you know they are provided with all the equipments necessary for them to protect themselves and also we have given certain financial incentives including you know double of we have doubled the the insurance scheme of their sagrahara but it, it you know you can't measure it monetarily yes. but we must ensure that at the end of the day they also have a decent lifestyle and so when it comes to their work shifts wise we have instructed the directors of the uh, the, the the hospitals mm-hmm. medical facilities to ensure that not to overwork them give them decent breaks let them stay at home for a decent period of time because these are the early days in case we don't think so but in case if the numbers rise they will have to work little longer yes but fortunately because of the curfew and also the the travel restrictions we have seen certain reductions in the other areas including road traffic accidents yes. which have taken heavy toll on the sri lankan healthcare system so we don't so in those se- segments the the doctors and the nurses are not overworked they are having a bit of a relaxing time in case if they want to come forward to support this epidemic uh, the 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 corona issue they should be able to come forward fresh and give them a helping hand other staffers 
uh, many say that the only increment in, in accidents is uh, home quarrels between the husband and the wife. Uh, finally, Doctor, uh, yes, let's say we secure Sri Lanka. We make sure that, that this crisis is taken care of. What is the plan to ensure that it's not going to be imported once again when we relax things? Now then once we control, um, since we are an island nation, we have very good chance of controlling afterwards. Then, then obviously you have to have a stringent measures in relation to quarantining. You will have to, anybody, uh, anybody, everybody who is uh, traveling from another country must be quarantined for 14 days. So that's a mandatory requirement. We will implement that and for the time being, um, there are no question as such, but we know a lot of Sri Lankan people those who are living in European countries, they are in a, a real, a really, a, a, you know, the, the bad status for the time being. So they want to come back. But unfortunately, since we have not fully controlled the Sri Lankan situation, we can't let them come because yes. we knew uh, initially it was from the people who traveled from Italy and South Korea. The, the escalation of this disease level um, took place in Sri Lanka. So obviously once the, the disease is controlled in our country, we should be able to bring our people back again because nothing like being in their mother country. So we understand their concern. So once they come back to Sri Lanka, so we'll have to quarantine them for, for a minimum period. Indeed, uh, Dr. Ramesh Pratirana, Minister of uh, Plantations and Export Agriculture, uh, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate uh, you sharing uh, all this information, uh, uh, very in vital information that actually you managed to give uh, to the public. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us on this special program as well. Uh, we'll, be right, uh, we'll be back next week with another edition of Get Real. Thank you for joining me. Have a good night. This is Adha Verana's continuing coverage on the coronavirus crisis.